Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to create strings using literal templates. A new feature of ES6 is template literal. This is a special type of string that makes creating complex strings easier. Template literals allow you to create multi-line strings and use string interpolation, which just basically means put data into strings, features to create strings. Consider the code below. We have a constant of a person. The, Zo the their name his name is Zodiac Hasbro, which is a crazy name. Age is 56. And that is an object, and we're assigning this object to the person constant variable. We have a template literal within multi lines and string interpolation. The constant greeting, hello, my name is. So then we have person dot name. So this would come out to be um, Zodiac Hasbro. I am, and then their age. So as you can see, it prints out this um, useful thing. And so this is string interpolation. This is used a lot. A lot of things happen there. Firstly, the example of the backticks, now quotes. Um, if you notice here, you've got backticks, right? And that's, that's pretty important. Um, we're not using quotes, the single quotes or double quotes. So you need to use back ticks. This is actually, I think, the first time that we've seen this to wrap strings. Secondly, notice the string is multi-line, both in the code and the output. You see that this new line has been maintained, even though there's no specific code there aside from a new line. Um, the money, or the um, this saves inserting new lines, or forward slash n, within strings. The um, this is called a bling, and then inside is the is the is the variable. The syntax used above is a placeholder. Basically, you won't have to use concatenation with the plus operator anymore, which means instead of sewing I am space and then putting this into a into quotes and then putting a plus and then putting person dot age and then put a plus and then and then add a string that is all this, you can just do this string interpolation. Uh, to add variables to strings, you just drop the variable in the template string and wrap it with a bling and uh, curly brackets. Similarly, you can include other expressions in your string literal. For example, bling and then curly brackets a plus b. This new way of creating strings gives you more flexibility to create robust strings. We want to use template literal syntax with backticks to display each entry of the result object's failure array. So the failure array, result success failure. This is the failure array. Um, each entry should be wrapped inside of, an, of a list el, el, uh, li element, so it's like a list element, with a class attribute of text warning and listed within the results display array. This is some real coding stuff. Like if you're building web apps, you're gonna be doing this kind of thing all the time. So use an iterator method, any kind of a loop to get the desired output. Okay, cool. So. Uh, our result are for, for failure here, we want to say make a list of an array. We want to change the code below this line and above this line. Uh, result display array. So result display array. Constant result display array. So what we're doing is just setting result display array. We want to have, okay, cool. Yeah. Make list of an array. When we're passing in make list of result.failure result.failure. Okay, so they're passing in this array. So we're just going to be dealing with an array that gets passed in. So we like, um, okay, for ver i, or let, let index equals zero. Index is less than the array.length i plus equals one. Okay, so now we have a loop which goes through the array. This is, well, we can set this equal to a string. And then within this, we want to say result display array. So for each element in this array, we want to add the string. And I'm using these back ticks here because what we want to do is go the array at point i. That'll give us, and we want to wrap this in the bling text. Um, and then inside and inside of this, what we want to do is add the list elements, right? So li class equals text dash warning. This is awesome. We're really doing some for real coding right now. And then it's unfortunate that it wraps like that. I'm going to move it over here so that we can see it better. And then I'm going to go close li. So what we're doing is we're setting 
a constant of result display array. Oh, it's read only. Your output will go here. Let's see. So right now what I'm doing is going console display, result display array. And so this should give us, yeah. And so this is the variable that we're looking for. Yeah. Okay, so now we're getting our result is, is set to equal to the result display array when we run make list on the result.failure. If we were to do run it on result.skipped, we would see that it would make a list of skipped of uh, ID blacklist, no dupes key. Now, right now we're not maintaining the, the new line element of this test, which I don't know, I don't, I don't really like, but no, we don't want to do it that way. We do it like that, we'll have a new line across each one. But that's not what we want to do anyways. Okay, so let's just run the test and see if this passes. Okay, well, this doesn't pass. Oh, I changed this to skipped. This should be failure. I wonder if that changes it. An iterator should be used. Template strings and expression interpolation should be used. Display, result display array is desired output. Result display array is desired output. It probably doesn't like that I'm using const. If I run that test, that doesn't pass still either. Ah, uh, okay, I see what's happening. What I'm doing is I'm creating a string, so I'm passing this all in as HTML. What they want is an array of strings. So we want our result, let's see, we can set this back to const. We can make this equal to an array. We could say result display array dot push. And now we're getting an array the way that they want it. So what I was doing was interpolating the string. That would have worked if you were building an HTML template because you could just plug that straight into the HTML. But for whatever reason, they wanted us to pass in an array of strings that have this tr string interpolation in it. So I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, how so let's just go through it one more time. So we've got our constant, and we set the result is equal to an object. And inside of this object, there's key value pairs. The key is success, failure, and skipped. And then the value are these arrays. And inside of these arrays, there's one, two, three strings. One, two, three strings. This one, there's two strings. And so what we do <coughs> is we have a function that says make a list. So if our program renders a success, we want to make a list of, of, of list elements, you know, the, the dotted line uh, period, like in HTML, you've got um, like a list element, right? Um, it's where you have, you know, unordered lists have uh, periods for each bullet point, and then ordered lists have like one, two, three. And so we're making a list of that, and we're, we, they've got a class of text warnings. So we're going to be stylizing them as a warning here, um, my guess is we can say that if it was a success, we could change this to text success in the future, but that's not necessary for now. Anyways, that's the result. And then so we're going to make a list depending on the array that's being passed in. And so then we're creating a constant of result display array, and we're setting that equal to an empty array. And then we're going to iterate through whatever array was passed in. So on our make list function, which was called down here, make list, we're g our our array that is being passed in is result.failure. So result.failure. So what we're being passed in is this array. And so he, this array becomes this guy right here. And then we're using this guy, the array that's being passed in, to loop through the array. So we're going to go this element, this element, this element. So for, at first it's um, array at position 0. And then the second, and then we loop through, and then I becomes two, and then array at position two, or uh, array becomes one, and then so then we pass in this guy, and so we keep adding this to the constant, right? And then we do the third one. So we get this uh, no var here, and then text warning var on top here, and then line break here. And so all three of these are passed in, are pushed in. So we've got the string pushed in here as the first one, and then we've pushed in here. And then we've pushed in here. One, two, three. One, two, three. And now the once that loops, and then once I becomes um, uh, two, 
i is less than array, or once i becomes three, i is less than array dot length, that's not true. So this for loop stops executing. And then we come down here and we return display, result display array, which we have pushed on those last three values. And that's how we get this um, section, this result. And it's the right result. Anyways, I've kind of gone um, into depth on this one. I hope you guys found this helpful and we'll see you in the next lesson.